Guys, let's take a look at ins and outs inside of Ableton Live. So how do we route audio and MIDI from one track to another? Let's take a look inside of Ableton. I've got everything set up here in front of me so that I can give you a demonstration, okay? So when we were talking about recording audio, we talked about how to get audio into Ableton. So we don't need to cover that again. You should watch that video. But here, we're going to talk about the internal routing of Ableton. And we're talking about sending audio from one track to another, if we need to, for whatever reason. And many reasons could be um, due to uh, wanting to have a whole heap of audio all go into one channel to be processed together or to have one MIDI signal trigger sounds on many different channels. The possibilities really become endless as you start to build your music production knowledge. So we'll start at the top with the most simple way to route audio, in my opinion. So I've got audio one this audio track and I've got a synth on it that sounds like this. Okay. And I want to send a piece of this audio. I don't want to send it, but I want this channel to listen to the audio one channel and potentially record the audio from it. Okay. So I've created an audio from, I want to listen to the audio from this channel. So the way that I would do that is I come into the menu system here and I select the track that I would like the audio to come from. And in this case, it's audio one. I want to listen to this audio on this track. So I select audio one and then I could put my cursor here. I could select the record button and I could press record. We're getting a little bit of distortion just because as those two signals add together, it's a little bit of clipping. But you can see that I've just recorded out that audio again, okay? And if I solo this and just listen to it, we hear the audio as it is right here, okay? It's essentially identical. And when you add them together, unfortunately, like we heard just before, they distort because they're adding together and that volume is increasing to a point where we're digitally clipping. So that's the simplest way that we can route audio. So we just make a new channel and we say, I want you to listen to the audio from audio one or any of these other channels. Okay. There's other ways to do it. So I've got this synth here and I'm sending the audio to another channel. Okay. So instead of using the input here, I'm using the output. So I can say that the audio goes from this channel out into audio two. And if you go ahead and press play, we could hear that when we solo it, the audio is coming from this channel, even though there's nothing on it. That's because internally, the audio is getting routed in here, and then we're listening to the incoming signal. And you'll be familiar with that if you looked at how to record audio. So we are monitoring for inputs that should be coming into this channel, and there are inputs because we've routed this to feed into that. And here's a demonstration that you can actually route multiple things into the one channel. I've got this channel also feeding into audio two. So you'll hear that there's that pad coming in as well. So there's two sounds being fed into that one channel and they're being summed together on that channel and then they're going out to the master, okay? So if I solo that, you can hear it, but if I turn monitor off, it's gone, okay? Because this channel is where the audio actually is. It's being sent there, okay? So we're sending two of these into one channel and then we're listening. So that is to listen to audio from that channel and this is to send audio to that channel. And you'll notice that if I went and I made an audio track, two audio tracks, and I grouped them together by going Control G, I've made a group. 
Okay. And now automatically things are rerouted. So instead of these saying master, they say to the group. Okay. So the audio is feeding into the group and then the group feeds to the master. Okay. So we're starting to get an idea of signal flow inside Ableton. Okay. So that's just a side point. Let's take a look at MIDI. MIDI can do the same thing. I can send MIDI out of somewhere into something else, or I can tell a MIDI channel to listen to MIDI from another channel. So let's take a look at that. So here I've got MIDI 2. Okay. And if we look at the outputs here, we can see that the MIDI is going out to the channel named MIDI Receive, which is this one here. And if I press play, you'll see that there's no MIDI on this channel. There is a MIDI instrument and somehow it's making noise. And that's because that channel is listening or rather being fed the audio from this channel and it's triggering the effect. Okay. Now with the MIDI from channel, we're doing something slightly different. We're saying that this MIDI channel should listen to the MIDI on that track. So rather than that track feeding to that track, it's not feeding to the MIDI from, but the MIDI from is listening to that track and it's listening to what's happening there. Okay. So we've got MIDI from set up and it's listening from MIDI two, and we're monitoring the input. And if I um, turn this off, you can hear that it is playing the hi-hat that we've got here. And if I turn that off, it's no longer listening for an input, so there's no audio. So I turn it back on, listen to the input, there it is. If I turn this off, we don't hear anything, okay? And if I turn that on, so this MIDI here, if I re-enable it, is triggering both these channels, and we're doing it in slightly different ways. This channel is routed so that it's sending the audio into this MIDI track, and this channel is set up so that it's listening to MIDI from that track. Okay? So these are the ways that we can route audio and MIDI inside of Ableton Live. And then if we wanted to go out altogether, I could say that I want the MIDI to output to my complete control instrument, okay? So if I had a synthesizer, for example, and it was correctly set up and configured into Ableton Live, I could actually send these middle MIDI signals out into an external device, okay? And I can select whichever channel I want it to go into on the device. Let's just say channel one would be what I'd set. And then that MIDI signal would shoot out of Ableton into another device. And you'll notice that this channel no longer is playing because I've just changed the routing. Now it's being fed out, but this channel still works because we are not sending the MIDI from here to here. This channel is listening to the MIDI that's happening there. So we can simultaneously send audio out of Ableton to a device, but we can still use tracks to listen to the MIDI that's happening on there. Okay. Hopefully that was nice and clear for you guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me increase the reach. If you would like to become part of the collective intelligence community, jump over and find us on Discord. The link is in the video description. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in another video.